Hello everyone, it's that time of the week where I try to find enough news to fill a whole weekly video. Will I succeed? Stay tuned to find out. As it turns out, the biggest news this week comes from Classic with the launch of Cataclysm Classic's first beta release. As is often the case with the first release, this build is missing quite a few of the key features of the end product with a distinct focus in testing the leveling zones. I remember back when Classic was being released that a common expectation in the community was that Classic would last until Wrath of the Lich King but would be unlikely to continue into Cataclysm. For me, the main interest of Classic was being able to experience the pre-Cata version of the vanilla zones. With most of Cata still being in-game today, I'm personally not super interested in it, but I am sure there will be folks who want to drop in out of curiosity and nostalgia. I do wonder if this will get anything close to the level we saw for previous classic releases, especially with Season of Discovery and Hardcore as competition. It's sure going to have to work hard for its share of attention. The most interesting thing for me will be to see how it does play out and if there will be enough interest to convince the team to eventually continue on with Mists of Pandaria Classic, an expansion that I suspect will get a lot more interest in Cataclysm. If you'd like an early look, do make sure to sign up for that beta. Blizzard do send out more invites and waves over the lifetime of a beta so there's still plenty of time to get in. I'll put a link in the description down below. One potential new addition to Kata is the option to select up res graphics. It's not super clear at this stage what this option will offer, but my guess is it may be a move towards a more modern era visual fidelity that was phased in throughout Mists of Pandaria and Warlords of Draenor. I do wonder if Blizzard are hoping that better visuals could be a carrot to try to attract more of the retail players base to give it a try. But what about you? Are you excited to drop into Cataclysm Classic? Are you a retail or a classic player? Let me know in the comments below. Season of Discovery wasn't forgotten with a bunch of class tuning buffs for Druid, Hunter, Mage, Paladin, Shaman, Warlock and Warrior along with tweaks to the Blood Moon PvP event World Force and a few other items. Details are on the screen just now. Over to retail and there has actually been a smidgen of news this week so let's start diving into that. Blizzard have also released a bunch of hotfixes for the Mythic Plus dungeons this week, mostly addressing a few corner cases and bugs. For the most part, these won't be super impactful, but they will reduce the risk of the wild white due to something weird happening in a run. Blizzard have also released an update on the Warrior Colossus Hero Talent Tree that was recently previewed. Their goal for this talent set is to lean into the idea of warriors being big and mighty veterans that no one would want to face, being able to deliver the biggest melee hits but also the need for players to apply a bit more skill in order to land them. The team have also confirmed that the warrior class tree is going to get a significant rework for the world within, including being able to take the shockwave and stormbolt talents together. There's also a little hint that the new Slayer talent set will offer more interactions with Execute. Hopefully we'll see that talent set in some more of the talent previews soon. The most notable news this week though came from the community when Monday's Week in WoW update from the developers was dominated by, well, basically a complete lack of any news. This led the community to express a mixture of frustration and memes at the lack of any info about the much anticipated but or very mysterious pirate patch. For me, the only surprise was the lack of a release date, given that we know from a recent update by executive producer Holly Longsdale that the patch would be dropping this month. While it's not uncommon for the release dates of patches to be announced as little as a week in advance, in 2023 we've become accustomed to a lot more certainty and I think that's a major part of the reason for this reaction. We're now only 7 weeks into the current patch which isn't very long without news when you compare it with the BFA and Shadowlands era. What made this noteworthy was that it was enough to prompt Holly to respond to one tweet with an assurance that they are watching and learning from this reaction. Personally, I think this is a kind of a no-win scenario for the developers. Since mid-Shadowlands, there's been a lot of discussion about how the PTR can spoil content and a fair bit of a demand for blind releases. Now it seems that while we do still want blind releases, we also want news about the releases. I do wish the developers good luck in trying to navigate their way through that type of feedback. I have seen some discussion about the idea of a happy medium, but I'm honestly not sure what that really would be. I saw a suggestion about not having a PTR, but weekly updates for the devs, but 
The thing with that is, I don't think it really changes anything. Unless you actually play the PTR, which I suspect only a minority of us do, for most folks, we already get our, most of our news from reports on Wowhead or content creators. So if Blizzards are the ones saying what's in the game, how is that really any different to content creators doing that? And of course, that would make life very hard for, I think, for add-on makers to test their stuff. Would we really want every new patch to be a smoking ruin of add-ons in day one? In our last update, Holly did mention that they anticipated a few bumps with this patch, and I guess this is just one of those bumps. Personally though, I think that this is a minor bump for the dev team compared to some of the bigger risks that are on the horizon with this patch. By keeping the patch completely a secret with just a pirate flag in the roadmap and combining that with the enthusiastic memeing and social media from several developers, and I feel that Blizzard are probably setting expectations a lot higher than is normal for a minor patch. After all, why keep something a secret if it's just the same old, same old? The problem with raised expectations, of course, is that it makes it much harder to meet those expectations. Now, I'm in no doubt that the developers have something that they're very excited about, but the problem for any creator in entertainment is that you often tend to get a bit too close to your creation, and that means that the developers are rarely the best judge of how something new will land with a player base. And this is where the big risk lies. If the new offering doesn't go down well with the community, the level of disappointment and potential backlash will likely be much more pronounced than is normal for a patch of this size. It's also very likely, I think, that if there are any bugs or issues, they're going to be immediately blamed on the lack of a PTR. Now, in reality, even with a PTR, we do see bugs and issues, and they're kind of somewhat inevitable. But this creates another big risk for Blizzard in what they are doing, that if there are any major problems, I suspect the end result would be that we'd be very unlikely to see something similar to this in the future. Now, personally, I am still looking forward to this new event. I'm definitely starting to feel the hunger for some new content to get my teeth into. Now, before I move on from this, I have been starting to wonder if Blizzard's experiment may extend beyond the new content to how they launch it. Currently, WoW patches are rolled out region by region, NA on Tuesday, Europe on Wednesday, and Asia on Thursday. And this creates a situation where only the NA folks get to enjoy it unspoiled. Of course, avoiding spoilers for a few hours is a lot easier than a few weeks. And in practice, with the NA servers usually going live mid-evening time for Europe, it's likely a lot of folks in Europe would not get to the new content until Wednesday anyways. Nevertheless, human nature is what it is, and let's be honest, a lot of us would end up spoiling it for ourselves anyways. This has certainly been a struggle I've had with some of the other blind content that's been released. It turns out time zones are just, well, difficult. The main benefit of a global release, I think, is that it means that any spoiling that does happen cannot then be blamed on Blizzard. The idea of a global release usually comes up around the race to world first, but given the experimental nature of this patch, it might well be the time that they decide to give it a try, especially as Classic have been doing global releases of late. Now, a global release would, I suspect, put a lot of load on the developers that handle the release side. The modern game is a lot bigger and more complex than Classic, and those of you in North America will be no stranger to release day and its tendency for maintenance to overrun, sometimes by many hours. In terms of what a global release could look like, I feel like following Classic's release timing, which was, if I remember correctly, around 9pm in Europe, could be quite risky for retail given those overruns, and I suspect we'll be more likely to see a much later release timing, like around midnight, which is when the retail expansion global releases tend to happen or perhaps they might decide to release the patch say in a Tuesday and then unlock the content in maybe a Thursday. The risk with this approach is that something might well slip through the game's encryption systems as has quite frequently been the case in the past. Overall, I think it's 50-50 if a global release would be a good thing for us, but I slightly lean towards saying no on the basis that the extra risk and load it would put in the developers might not really be worth it for the fairly limited benefits it would bring to us as players, at least in the EU.
This coming Monday, we'll see the launch of the Hearthstone 10th anniversary event in World of Warcraft. You'll be able to get the fiery Hearthsteed just by logging into Hearthstone, which is free to download. If you haven't already, I'd recommend getting it downloaded in advance. There's also going to be a week-long crossover event in World of Warcraft. We don't know a lot about that at the moment, but there is another mount, a toy, and some other rewards up for grabs. So at least there is going to be some new content to try and keep us all busy. Now, another reminder is for those of you who still have Dragonflight Renown or old Caragon rewards to farm up. It's currently World Quest bonus week until the upcoming reset. That gives a 50% reputation buff, so it's actually a great time to go out and start farming those World Quests. Well, that's all for this week. If you've enjoyed this week's news video, do make sure to hit that like icon below to let me and YouTube know that I'm on the right track. And if you haven't already, do hit that subscribe button and the bell icon below. It makes a huge difference to channels like mine and will ensure that you'll find out whenever a new video goes live. Thanks for watching and I will see you all again soon.